Hello friends, uh, we are continuing with uh, the Scholar Gypsy by Matthew Arnold. We completed three paragraphs and in the in this three paragraphs we have, what we have done is uh, we have read the pastoral setting. Uh, we have uh, seen uh, the peasants, we have seen the shepherds, we have seen the sheep, the poppies uh, and the flowers. So in this beautiful setting the last line was and the ice traveled down to Oxford Towers. Now this Oxford Tower is almost as an intruder into beautiful uh, rural setting. It represents conventional studies. It, it represents, uh, uh, according to Matthew Arnold, maybe an industrial society uh, which is antithesis uh, to the rural setting, the beautiful rural setting. Okay, now let's continue uh, with our poem in paragraph fourth. And near me on the grass lies Glenn Wills book. So he's uh, now... The, uh, he has said that he is going to stay here uh, till the evening time. In the meantime, he is reading uh, the book, uh, Glanville's famous book, Vanity of Dogmatizing, uh, published in the year 1661. Come, let me read the off-read tale again. So it has been read again and again and let me read it again. The story of Oxford scholar poor. So this is a story of a poor Oxford scholar of pregnant parts and quick inventive brain. So he was a pregnant parts means that he had potential and he had quick inventive brain. That means he was a creative person. He could think originally. Okay, so that this is very important. Who tired of knocking at preferment store? So he was really tired of knocking at, he was not getting in any advancement in his life. Now, what could be the reason when he was really uh, an Oxford scholar, but he was not getting any advancement in his life? The reason could be, I'm just giving two examples. Uh, one is of Henry David Thoreau. Now, he was an American. Uh, had he uh, been into a conventional life, he could have done great, probably great things in his life. But what instead he chose was to get away from life, go to a pond, Walden, stay there, uh, and see life uh, as simple as possible, as close to nature as possible. Same way Mahatma Gandhi, as a lawyer, he was not successful. Uh, he was not having preferment in his life, <clears throat> not very successful. But when he changed course and when he went to South Africa and he opened his ashram, uh, that means when he was, he got closer to life, closer to himself, closer to nature, then he probably could realize himself much better. And then obviously rest is history including uh, Satyagraha both in India and in South Africa. So same way as scholar, he was not getting preferment in his life. Uh, and then once someone mourned, he forsook his friends. So he left uh, his friends, he left the Oxford and went to learn the gypsy lore. So he went and went with gypsies and roamed the world with that wild brotherhood <clears throat> and came as most men deemed to little good. Now, according to conventional society, uh, he was not a success. Deemed a little good, that means he was not successful. Same way as, as Mahatma Gandhi, he was not at all a powerful person. Uh, he was not at all a wealthy person. Same way, uh, Henry David Thoreau, he was not a powerful, neither a powerful nor a wealthy person. So same way, society judges that the scholar Gypsy did not come to good but came to Oxford and his friends no more. But he did not return to his friends. But what we are going to realize later on is that if anyone was successful, he, it was this scholar gypsy to the extent of being immortal. right? But once years after in the country lanes, so years after when he had left, uh, then once in a country lane, that means in a village area, two scholars whom at college erst he knew. So he knew uh, two scholars met him and of his <clears throat> way of life inquired. So it is very natural that after a long time when you are meeting, you will inquire what are, what are you doing. But this scholar gypsy was unique because he had left and he had gone to live with the gypsies. Whereat he answered that the gypsy crew, his mates, now this gypsy crew are his mates, had arts to rule as they desired. Now this gypsy is also very important. Because if we see in the Western society and we see in the literature, uh, they are not treated very nicely. Okay, uh, they are considered to be uh, 
like anti-social in, in a certain sense. If you remember, if you have read Maggie Tilliver, she has also a, a, some sort of a, a relationship with a gypsy. Do tell me in your uh, comment uh, column who is Maggie Tilliver and what sort of a relationship does she have with gypsy. But but uh, I can continue and tell you that Hitler, he also prosecuted gypsies and uh, including Jews. So gypsies are considered to be unconventional, but now they are his mates and had arts to rule as they desired the working of men's brain. So they, they know how men's, men's brain work and they can bind them to what thoughts they will. So that means they can read uh, human mind. They have got some sort of a special power, including hypnotizing power. Uh, and I, he said, the secret of their art. When fully learned, will to the word impart. So when when I learned the secret of their art, I will impart that art to the word. But it needs heaven sent movements for this skill. But it needs some heaven sent movement, some special movement, some lightning, some flash, some eureka movement. Uh, so it will take time. But what is very important is that we know that our uh, friend, the scholar Gypsy, in the pre previous pre uh, paragraph, we learned that he has inventive brain. That means he's creative, imaginative. And the conventional wisdom, conventional knowledge of Oxford was not for him. So he goes into something unconventional, which the society uh, deems to be unconventional. They said he left them and returned no more. So he told to his friends and then he did not return again. But rumors hung about the countryside that the lost scholar long was seen to stray. Now the lost scholar, but lost scholar to whom? Uh, to obviously to the society uh, which considered any person who has gone to the gypsy to be lost. Long has been seen to stray and he has been stray also stray from the conventional path. Seen by rare glimpses, pensive and tongue tied. But he was seen in the countryside, in the village area, sometimes glimpses pensive. So whenever he was seen, he was in pensive. That means in thoughtful, in meditative mood and tongue tied. So he was talking to no one in hat of antique shape and cloak of gray, the same the gypsies wore. So because he had now been friend to the gypsies, so he was wearing their clothes only. The hat of uh, hat and cloak, that means cover, the outer cover of the body of gypsy style. Shepherds had met him on the hearst in spring. Some, some of the geographical names will be coming now, for example, Hurst, and this is the area in and around Oxford. This is the place where Matthew Arnold spent the best part of his life, including being a student and then being a teacher. Right, so he's being nostalgic and he's remembering some of the places. So shepherds had met him on the Hurst in spring. So this, this must be some of the place in Hurst. And in springtime, uh, when the shepherds are um, grazing their sheep, they have seen him. They have met him at some lone ale house in the Berkshire Moors. Now Moors is an isolated place. Uh, it, it, this is a place, Berkshire, this must be a place. And in there, a lone ale house, ale house means bear house, a bear house on the warm ingle bench. So there must be fire burning and there must be a bench. So he must be sitting there, a scholar gypsy must be sitting there, sitting on the bench close to the fire and smock frogged frogged boors. Boors means peasants uh, or uh, ill-mannered person. That means they, they are basically peasants who have done their hard labor and now in the evening they are coming to have some enjoyment in the beer house. Had found him seated at their entering. So as they entered, they found him seated in the bench close to the fire. But midst their drink and clatter, he would fly. Now because he's a reclusive person, so as, as soon as there is some company, he forsook, uh, leaves that company and he goes. And I myself seem half to know thy looks. And I quite, uh, like I, I may also, uh, I know who you are. I, I remember your looks and put the shepherds, wanderers on thy trace. So whenever I find some shepherds or some wanderers, I just ask them uh, whether, have you seen uh, the scholar gypsy or not and boys who in lone wheat fields scare the rooks I ask if thou has passed their quiet place so I ask the boys also uh, who are scaring the rooks who are scaring the crows from the wheat field whether they have seen you or not or in my boat I lie 
sometime in my boat also i lie this the this the speaker is saying although a scholar gypsy is dead almost 200 years back this is 1853 and the book was written in 1661 so but a, a speaker a poet he is also saying that all in my boat i lie moved to the cool bank in the summer heats so summer time when my boat is anchored uh, close to the bank uh, and i am resting on my uh, boat mid wide grass meadows which the sunshine fills and i see uh, close to the bank there is a grass meadow uh, there is a grassland and watch the warm green muffled kumner hills and from my boat sitting i can watch the kumner hill that this is a very famous hill close to oxford and it is muffled mean it is covered with uh, grass it is covered with trees and wonder if thou hauntest their shy retreat and i wonder sitting on my bed whether you are haunting that place uh, you are still there now haunting means because he is already dead 200 years back so some sense of ghostly presence can be there uh, uh, the spirit can be there so and wonder if thou hauntest that shy retreat why shy retreat because he is a reclusive person he, sh- he has shunned the society so he'll be somewhere he may be somewhere in the hills for most i know thou lovest retired ground uh, i know that you don't like society and you love the retired ground retired ground ground means that away from society now one thing also you must remember that our uh, uh, scholar gypsy he is free he is unfettered life in nature he is enjoying life in nature which represents the freedom of life before the industrial age right uh, so he's free person he can roam anywhere close to the nature and why is he close to the nature because he is searching for some god sent movement and god sent movement will not uh, will not he will not get it in the urban center just for uh, example i am telling you like for example in hindu temples they are situated in the himalayas for example kedarnath and badrinath away from the society so if you want spirituality if you want any connect with god leave the society behind leave the urban centers behind and go close closer to the nature therefore our scholar gypsy he is also going away from the nature uh, he is going towards the nature and away from the urban center right d at the ferry oxford riders blith returning home on a summer night so also uh, the oxford riders they are on the ferry uh, on the boat they are returning back that they must be villagers they may be students they may be teachers of the oxford uh, they are returning blith they are very happily they are returning home on the summer night have met crossing the stripling thames so they are crossing the stripling thames stripling means very young thames river on a boat at bablock height now height meet a landing place for boat so bablock may be a place and height may be the place where the boat is <clears throat> now uh, stopped landing place trailing in the cool stream thy fingers wet and what you are doing uh, close to the bank uh, you are trailing your fingers on the in the water okay the thames water as the punts rope chops round punts mean the when the boat comes near and it is anchored the the rope is tied and leaning backward in a pensive dream while you uh, while the boat is being tied what you are doing in the bank of the river sitting on the bank of the river you are in a reclining position leaning backward means in a reclining position in a pensive dream and you are in a very thoughtful dream we, we know that he is in a very thoughtful dream he is never talking to no one and fostering in thy lap a heap of what of flowers so in while you are in a reclining position you on your lap is a heap of flowers plucked in shy fields and distant white wood f- bowers shy fields mean uh, you have plucked those flowers in very shy fields mean fields which are away from society and distant bowers mean in distant woods area uh, you have plucked those flowers and thine eyes resting on the moonlit stream while you are constantly uh, because you are in a meditative mood you are in a thinking mood therefore you are seeing the stream and and which is lightened by the moonlight and then they land and thou are seen no more and when the people who are on the boat coming back to oxford when they land but because you are not a, a man who loves enjoy society so you leave at once you leave right uh, so uh, i hope you uh, you are getting the sense of the poem and we'll continue in the next video thank you